But Adan Shemai, I am a Lord Welshy, and welcome to Firewatch, a game where you watch fires and you watch them burn across the countryside. I don't think it's quite that. It's um, some people have touted it as a walking simulator, but I think there's more to it than that. Um, in terms of there being much more in the way of story and the style of the presentation, rather than being necessarily a big action type game. So let's get into it, see what happens. And it's always good when the company is called Panic Inc. Mm. Boulder, Colorado in 1975. What a name for a place, Boulder. What if you called the town just Rock? Well, there's little Rock, I suppose. You see Julia. Hello? Oh, right, okay. I was supposed to click. She's about your age, late twenties, laughing with well-dressed professors and grad students from nearby CU Boulder. You, Henry, are out drinking with your pals. You approach her. You are drunk. So, what's your, you know, major? Or, you, you're pretty. What's your major? You slur the word major and it smells like cause. You give an awkward smile. <laughs> That's not a smile. <laughs> Evolutionary biology, she says. And I'm a professor. Cool, you reply. What's yours, she asks. She sniffs the air. Toxicology? <laughs> oh, that's, uh, that's, that's funny. Was that a burn, you ask? She says, definitely. Worried she heard your feelings, she asks if you want to split a cheeseburger. Wow, this escalated quickly. One week later, you are Julia's boyfriend. Isn't that how all the best romance stories start? You split a cheeseburger. Oh. Hello. I will take the backpack. Thank you. Bing. Okay. We are... Did all that take place inside that elevator? Okay then. Cool. I'm guessing... Is that blood? No. Can I get it? Can I jump? No jump. Let's just go straight to the truck, shall we? I'm guessing this is my truck. Why would you put your backpack in the truck bed? I would put it sort of next to me on the passenger seat inside the truck. Uh, I don't think it'd be very safe bouncing around in the back there. You date for over a year. She drives you absolutely nuts. It's great! You move in. You share an apartment near the school with a view of the mountains. Oh, that's lovely. You two drink beers out on the deck. You drink beer just about everywhere. Life is good. Julia wants to get a dog. We should get a dog. There's a scruffy, undersized beagle. Julia is in love. She wants to bring it with her to class. There's also an intimidating but gentle-eyed German Shepherd. Nothing bad could happen to Julia while walking this dog. It's badass. Well... She wants the beagle, but I'd quite like the German Shepherd. Go for the beagle, she wants the beagle. Bucket's a good dog, and a week later you've totally forgotten about the other one. Julia loves him. You love him too. Aww. So easy to love dogs. 1979, you talk out on the deck. It's summer, 9.30pm, and the heat still radiates off of the high desert. What do you think about kids, she asks. I hate the little buggers, I reply. Oh. Kids? They're not very smart or good at much. I'm saying if you and I have some, a couple of little idiots. Uh, I mean, I'm not in any rush to have kids. She looks away out towards the mountains. We have plenty of time, right? Speak for yourself, mister. Don't worry, you assure her. You tell, you tell her she has the body of an undergrad. I don't know why I'm starting to talk like that. My ovaries didn't get the memo, she says, laughing it off. One day, okay? Okay, one day, she says. Six months later, you get engaged, lying in bed on a Sunday morning. No effort whatsoever. Ooh. Ooh. Where are we? Time to leave. What's that? Fire danger, red. Maximum fire danger. Oh, wow, cool. Zoom in. Well, he looks slightly creepy. With that dead eye smile that he's got going on. So the fire danger today is extreme. 
Okay. Whoop, zoom out. Let's go for a stroll. Wow, I love the stylistic uh, presentation of this game. It's very cool, very nice. I use cool a lot to describe games. I need to think of new adjectives. I think the word is adjectives. Right, we've got a map. So where am I on this map? I'm in a car park of some form. Thunder Canyon. That sounds like a ride, doesn't it? Do not forget to check in. You're in their country. Learn to live with bears. Was Julia a bear? <laughs> Warning, thoroughfare trail is not recommended for inexperienced hikers. Thoroughfare is a prime primitive backcountry trail. Okay. Have I got, did I get the stuff out of the back of the... Yes, I did. There's nothing in the truck that I need. Okay. Ooh, very nice. I actually really enjoy hiking uh, like through mountains and forests and woodland and stuff, so this game really kind of feels quite up my alley. It's something that I like to do in my spare time. 1980. It's a Thursday night and Julia is four hours late. She doesn't call. You're worried and getting angrier by the minute. She walks in after you've gone to bed. She's not quite drunk, but she's clearly been having a fun time. You fight when she gets between the sheets. Uh, oh, do I get mad or ignore her? I get mad. You call her an inconsiderate asshole. She tells you to fuck yourself and to not be such a baby. You call her selfish. She knows you mean it and it hurts her feelings. Well, that's because she's being selfish from the sounds of it. Although, I wouldn't want to stop her necessarily going out and having a good time, but... Anyway, Julia still likes to draw in 1981. She draws plants from her research. She draws all the places you go. She draws you. You pose and flex like He-Man, or you frolic like a Victoria's Secret model. Yes. Very nice. Thank you. Oh. And now we're here. Oh, wow. Oh, look at that sunset. That's lovely. Hello. Hello. I'm just admiring the sunset in Firewatch. It, it's very sunsetty. Oh, thank you. Hitman Beta footage on on a memory stick. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> so that's a fallen tree. The sun is setting. I'm guessing I need to get where I need to go. I hope I don't encounter any bears on this trail. But yeah, this is really kind of the type of environment I would just love to go for a nice long walk around. Eight more miles, miles to the lookout. Really? That's a long way to go. Space bar to climb over obstructions. The sun's going down! 1982. During the summers, you and Julia enjoy walking bucket at night. Oh, the beagle. There's a festival in town that brings in folks from far away places. One of them tries to mug you with a knife. Fuck you, bitch. Bucket gets kicked. ba 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 fuck da da dog Julia yells. She gets flustered and has trouble speaking when she is stressed. You confront the attacker. You beat his goddamn face in. No one kicks my dog. Your arm gets cut up, but you beat the guy to a pulp. You don't feel very tough. You cry your eyes out before the cops show up. Julia asks to take a different path from that day forward. You say okay. You don't want to go that way either. From then on, you walk by the river. 1984. Plans to have kids get waylaid by work. Of course. Julia gets offered a job at Yale. Yale is in Connecticut. That's how it's spelt. 2,000 miles away. It's a great job. Associate department chair. She wants to move. You absolutely do not. Convince her not to take the job or agree if you commute back and forth. Two you can't commute 2,000 miles? That's stupid. But I wouldn't want to stop her from taking the job. <sighs> Holy crap, am I the asshole in this game? Which is, which is the least douchebaggish of these two to do? Uh, well, I'd rather she takes the job and commute, but 2,000 miles is a hell of a commute. I'm guessing it'd be like a week-long thing and she'd be home on the weekends, maybe? But I wouldn't want to force her not to take a job that she really wants. Bloody hell, I am... 
agree if she commutes. You ask her if she'll commute back and forth. You don't want to move to Connecticut. She says that'll be hard, but she'll do it for you. She'll do it if you won't move. You tell her not to pass it up if that's what she wants. She agrees. She flies back to Boulder three times each semester. Oh, I see. I should have just moved to Connecticut. How annoying is that going to get? 1985, Julia was sent home from Yale on paid leave after having an episode. She lost it on a colleague for borrowing books that were important to her research. She didn't remember she had happily loaned them to him just two days prior. Oh. She was found crying in the stairwell. You say that maybe you guys should talk to someone about it, or you make macaroni and drink wine and try to forget about it. We should probably try to talk to someone about it, rather than getting drunk and eating macaroni. After seeing multiple doctors and having many tests, they are worried that Julia might be suffering from early onset dementia. She's 41. What? That would suck. Ooh. I wasn't expecting the feels. Why is this game making me have the feels? <laughs> of course I'd open it to that bloody page. Ugh. Bucket is getting old, yeah. Julia comments that it's kind of nice because he gets in less trouble around the house. A week later, she goes back to the university. 1987. Julia's affliction gets worse. She can't remember things in class. Her research is in shambles. She drives her car to the next town over for no particular reason and has to be brought home by the police. She is devastated. She is sent home on permanent medical leave. Oh, some days you get the Julia who calls you a dope and your unborn children little idiots. Other days you get a stranger. She pulls you into bed to make love. After five minutes she goes into a panic, believing her dad is at the door. You tell her family. They are crushed and begin to make trips to and from their home in Australia to visit her. For a while your friends come by with little things to brighten the day. She gets worse. This is getting really heavy. 1988. You spend your days following Julia around the house. You count the seconds between the two weekly visits from Daniel, the nurse. He suggests that Julia could live somewhere else, somewhere with 24-hour care, a home. It sits with you for a couple of months. Do I move her into a full-time care facility or take care of her by myself? Somewhere with 24-hour care would be good for her, but... Bloody hell, this is, this is hitting close to home. Um, for, for different reasons. You're determined to take care of her by yourself. That's probably the, a poor decision. Did I just sleep out there for the night? Looks like it. Uh, which way am I going? We'll go this way. Well, this is lovely and green. These kind of bright, cheery graphics and the scenery is really juxtaposing the story and where what's been happening with Julia in the past. Very stark contrast there. Bye bye, dear. It is impossibly hard. The worst is when you get mad at her, like when she tries to cook her own food. You can't do anything without her, and she can't do anything without you. When she goes to sleep, you stay up for a few hours, drinking on the deck, watching baseball in the summer, college basketball in the winter, drinking then too. You start going out after you put her to bed. The first time you do it, you worry about her getting up and walking around while you're gone. You put a chair in front of the bedroom door, or you trust that she sleeps like a rock. I wouldn't want to put a chair, chair in front of the door. You go to the same bar at the boring end of Pearl Street. It's nice there. Over time you tell Sheila, the bartender, everything. It's a huge weight off. You're home and in bed by 1am a couple nights a week. You look forward to those nights. 1989. One night you were stopped at a DUI checkpoint. You blow a point ten and are taken to jail for the night. You consider trying to hide it, but you tell your sister, Susan. She needs to go and check on, on Julia. Julia's parents take the next plane from Australia. They can't believe the state your house is in. Then they tell you Julia is coming to live with them. You don't argue, you say you'll visit soon. A few weeks go by. Summer is coming and you see an ad in the paper for a job. You take it. So I just let Julia... Wow. I mean, obviously, living with dementia is hard. I can't imagine at all how hard, but... 
just oof. leaving her alone like that to go out. I don't know. It's not right. But people deal with things in different ways. This is this is much heavier than I thought it was going to be. Anyway, up the stairs. Ooh, look at the moon. Good night, moon. Ooh, an outhouse and a generator. Is there what if there's a bear at the top of the stairs? Huh. Nope, no bear. Not going in yet. I want to have a Oh, there's a lookout. Thoroughfare lookout. Well, you missed the U, the G, and the H from thoroughfare, but... You know, whatever. That's my toilet! Wait, was there a gas mask on the rock down there? Is that a gas mask? Looks like it, doesn't it? <laughs> There's a reason we put gas masks by the toilets. Turn on the power. I have to go downstairs and turn on the power. I guess. The Singular Mind, Dr. Jonas Allard. And Glory by McManus. I've got a water jug, I've got guidebook, cookbook, stove. Uh... Okay, yeah, I do have to go downstairs and uh, light the... Start the generator. Okay. There was no point coming upstairs. I should have just... Ooh, gas tank. That's pretty cool. I like... Uh... I like when they add little sort of extra animation like that in to show characters sort of behaving as they kind of would like when you're ducking under something like that you probably would kind of put your hand on it to steady yourself this is seriously pretty i love the style i mean it just looks really really good it's not obviously like photorealistic or anything but it's a very stylized piece of work and it works well uh for this game i think a baseball Okay. Oh, cool. You can examine it kind of... Uh, what's the game I'm thinking of? L.A. Noir style, looking at the evidence. Dun 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 dun. Hmm, a bloodied fingerprint. I don't think there is. <laughs> really? That's as far as I can throw the thing. <laughs> That's better. That's a good throw. Okay, what am I supposed to do with the gen How do I turn the power on? Oh my god, that's creepy. Hello. I'm here to tell you about preventing forest fires. Only you can prevent them. Don't let the fire get you. Okay, thank you. Okay. I really do not like your face. I'm going to throw you over there. <laughs> uh, what's that say? Beartooth Point, 1.3 miles, and Thoroughfare Lookout is 6.3. How do I get the power on? I'm doing something wrong here. Well, there must be power because there's a spotlight on up there. So what have I done wrong then? Ooh, cinder blocks. Wow, this guy's pretty strong to be able to just hold one one-handed like that. These cinder blocks are heavy. Can I throw it? Huh! Okay, yeah, this guy is like must be built like a bloody ox. I mean, have you ever held a cinder block? They're really heavy chunks of concrete. You can't just hold them one-handed and rotate them and then chuck them. They're really heavy. Now, where do I turn on the power? Um, 
I seriously need to figure this out. I'm taking too long. Okay, there's the gas bottles. So I, it's not that. The generator I didn't seem able to do anything with. Um... Oh, generator switch. Wow. Hello, Two Forks Tower. Hi. Hello. Um, hello? Whoever this is? It's Henry, right? Yeah. I'm Delilah. Yeah, that's what the guy said on the phone. So, what's wrong with you? Excuse me? <laughs> People take this job to get away from something. So, what's wrong? She's quick. What's wrong with you? That's a great idea. Go ahead. Look, I just hiked for two days, so I don't really follow whatever it is you're doing right now. You take a stab at what's wrong with me. Fine, then can I what, sleep forever? Sure, buddy. Okay, now go ahead. Examine the pine cone. Throw the pine cone. Cook the pine cone. You've killed three ex-husbands, rebelling against mom. Nobody back home can stand you. I think she's killed three ex-husbands. Okay. Uh, you've killed three husbands. You're a black widow and you're just out here until she <laughs> dies down and then you'll kill again. Very good. Bravo, Henry. Okay, I sleep now? Not quite. Now you. Okay, good night. Bye. Let's see. I don't know anything about you. I say you got fired Not from quite. your job and have finally decided to write your novel. That's the sort of bullshit reason you'll find a man out in the woods. Good night. Welcome to the job. And we sleep. And begin our watch of fire. We're not even on day one. Okay, well this seems as good a place as any to leave it for now. Uh, didn't get a hell a heck of a lot done. Um, we basically hiked for two days, made it to the lookout tower, spent ages trying to turn on the generator. Boy, that... <laughs> I am not observant when it comes to what I need to do. Um, really liking the art style, really liking the presentation of the whole thing. Story, even in just those first few minutes really heavy stuff um, but interested to see what's to come uh, in future we're about to start day one so we'll pick that up in the next episode anyway thank you guys so much for joining me on this one if you liked it hit that like button down below as always I'll catch you in the next video bye Z's